This is Dr. Ishembe, Associate Consultant of Intervention Cardiology, Oswald Heart Center, Magdi Aou Foundation. As we've said before, now is the, fear, uh, the first um, uh, video upon uh, the series. Uh, I'll be discussing today the uh, CT analysis of the TAVI. The first thing is that you have to determine the annulus, so I'll take you through the steps. As you can see in front of you, this is the Ozarks MD, and here th this is a very nice tool in order to have, uh, if you want to um, uh, show your uh, CT analysis in front of anyone, is that uh, to hide the patient names. First of all, you just get on the patient name and then uh, do a right click by pressing the, with your two fingers on the notepad and then you down there you can discover that there is uh, a patient name if you pressed on it those names that they appear to be hidden they'll uh, uh, come up again so without further ado let's start so first of all when i get to choose the study itself i do not choose it down from the series itself because this if you're going to integrate a report it will not be included in the report so first of all you choose the patient name so that you have the two series the CT for the uh, um, aorta itself and the uh, uh, peripheral angiography of the patient's vascular axis. So the first thing to do is that you get a quick look on the patient uh, chest and then here this patient in particular I can see a very peculiar some uh, a very peculiar object that we need to uh, put into consideration while doing the um, uh, implantation itself which is this huge pad of fat this might get into uh, your way when you're doing the TAVI and then suddenly your patient's blood pressure went down and then you start about thinking about is this patient in going into pericardial effusion or not if you have in your memory that this patient has a prominent pad of fat and then you put your probe in you find it then you'll not be uh, scared however if you're not getting a good attention to the CT images, then uh, you might as well um, be uh, confused. So first of all, we get uh, over here, as you can see on the mouse, and we choose the 3D MPR. So the MPR is a multiple reconstruction. It looks at the images from three different perspectives. As you can see, there are lines, they are coded. So the blue line cuts the image, and then it translated in this window with a, a blue mark tag and also the uh, yellow line do, does the same the purple line does the same so what is the first step to do the first step is to find the first step to do is to find the uh, amount of contrast and hue that will show you a delineation of the structures without getting over and spilled over contrast like this is an over contrast hue and this is under so you have to get into something in between in order to see the walls of the vessel and the structures as well so this is the perfect thing for me and then we'll start to get the true annulus we move the axis down at the LVOT and then we make the lines parallel to the LVOT walls and coaxial with the aortic axis. So here as well, we do the same. In order to get a short axis down there that looks a little bit circular. We use the magnifier in order to get a good image and then this sinks the zoom between the three of them. So the first thing that we do now is that we we'll move the axis along the aorta and our eyes are fixed on the purple window down on the left till we see the right coronary cusp is appearing. So here, this is the right coronary cusp, we move our axis over there and then we adjust it to be just at the nadir. And then afterwards, we try to get the other cusp by moving the blue line, swiping down at the non-coronary cusp, and then we're, our eyes are fixed on the right side at the blue window. And we move the purple line again to get at the nadir of the non-coronary cusp. 
At this point, we have aligned two of the nadirs, the right coronary and the non-coronary cusp together. So we moved from here. Now I'm moving from uh, at the lower part of uh, the lower left window to the non-coronary cusp. So now we have only the left coronary cusp to be aligned. So we move the yellow and then we look at the yellow window till the non-coronary cusps appear, uh, the left coronary cusp appear, right here. Now we move it a little bit high. So what we see now is that the three cusps are aligned and we make sure that this is the lowest part of the cusp, like here. And then we enlarge this image by double tapping on it and then we scroll up and down and try to notice that the three cusps appear and disappear at the same time, like this. So that means that this is the level of the true onions. Please keep posted and uh, in the next videos we'll see how to do the measurements of the CT. Thank you so much for listening and I hope you enjoyed it.